Hey guys, so I just left the taco truck, but um, but it was funny because as I was heading over from my car, um, I ran into a guy probably not even two blocks from my car, um, met up with this gentleman who was out in the street on his bike, and he stopped me, and I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to actually have a conversation with him, but I decided, you know what, let me, let me see what this guy's talking about. I thought, honestly, I just thought he was catcalling me, and... Um, I was kind of thinking, this kid, this kid is definitely barking up the wrong tree. But whatever, <laughs> let me just chat with him and see what he's what he's talking about. And um, it was funny because he asked if I would like record him, and I, I don't know where he thought I was gonna put what he was saying. Like, don't know, I don't know why he uh, thought that I was gonna like blast him on YouTube or Facebook Live or whatever. But um, but I guess inadvertently he was right because. As a result of our conversation, um, I think that there were some things that were worth uh, mentioning about our encounter, even if not specifically with what he said. Um, so this was a young guy, probably early 20s, if that. Um, hopefully at least that, because he was definitely very drunk. And um, he had a lot to say about who he thought was behind all the things that are happening, which... Um, I'm no stranger to the possibilities of things not being quite what they appear to be on the surface. You know, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that um, in the last week, things in Minneapolis and across the country have gotten very weird. Um, not, we're just coming off the tail end of, of lockdown for the coronavirus pandemic. And we had a uh, incident where a gentleman named George Floyd was murdered in the street um, by a police officer and there's a lot of um, people who have um, been demonstrating and who have been um, seeking out justice um, you know and that's that's a biblical prem premise is you know seek justice and love mercy and all that stuff so I, I mean I do do think that justice is a, a righteous cause to champion but um, but amongst the people who are out trying to stand peacefully for justice. There are um, people who kind of just are playing follow the leader. There's people who are out thinking they're playing a game of Grand Theft Auto. There's extreme groups that have um, ethnic affiliations, both black and white and in between. Um, there's territorial criminal affiliated groups and there's anti-establishment groups and all sorts of things and people and actors with bad intentions um, out on the at what we could lovingly call at this point a battlefield right now of what should have just been sites of peaceful demonstrations asking for justice and so the conversation that I had with this guy is that he was very torn he didn't know who to point the finger at he didn't know what side to fight on he didn't know if he should be out fighting if he should be throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails and all sorts of things, or if he should just take a nap and go to sleep, call up his old girlfriend and snuggle up with her. He wasn't sure. He just didn't know. He didn't know who to blame. He didn't know what to do. And like I said, he was very drunk. So he'd already made that decision to uh, at least partially cope with all of his confusion and his emotions at the time. And uh, then he said something that I found. Um, comical in light of the fact that it matched so perfectly with the sermon today is uh he said you know i'm out here because i thought the sun was supposed to energize you he said um i haven't slept much i'm very tired and so i probably could just go to sleep but um you know i was expecting the sun to energize me he's like but it's just really draining me he's like I really think it's because I don't have enough water. And I said, you don't have enough water, sir? And of course, he's a kid, so that's just me and my quirky um, ways I address people. He's like, yeah. He's like, I really think I don't have enough water. And I said, you know, I think that you're, I think you're right. I think you don't have enough water. Um, and so I did, in fact, close out our time asking him if I could pray with him and um, I just I told him I wasn't gonna be weird and um, I was just gonna say something you know 
say a few things and he reluctantly did agree and allow me to pray for him and I, I just prayed that he would have all the most refreshing water and that the Lord would take care of him and uncloud his judgment and his confusion and all that kind of stuff but I just say that to say it, it was just so funny and so uh, what serendipitous is the common term that I just thought that it was important to share that but it was another thing that I thought about as I was um, kind of um, walking through the neighborhoods and I've been trying to take side streets so that um, I could actually hear myself think and hear well enough to possibly maybe record this video um, for you guys but was this idea that um, of like the story of Exodus so right honestly the night before all the foolishness started happening my mom who even though sometimes her instructions are a little strange I know this lady hears from the Lord that she's got a prophetic gift on her life and so um while I may not always understand it um I can't appreciate the accuracy and validity of the past things that she has said and enough to respect it going forward but she she had said something about again the, the night before all this really started kicking off is you know um eat light and um be prepared to go or stay as the Lord leads and I thought it was a very weird instruction it was just a it was just a text message and so I just I kind of had to laugh because again I'm like I know well enough to trust it but I'm always I'm also like this instruction makes zero sense to me I don't understand it <laughs> you know um, but what I found to be really funny about it in retrospect is the fact that that instruction has been given before and you can see it in Exodus 11 verses, or sorry, Exodus 12 verse 11 through 14. That's the instruction basically God gave to the children of Israel during the season of Passover. Um, during that first season where that angel of death was passing through. And, um, you know, that was the exact, the very, very exact instruction that they were given. It's like, eat light and um, basically be, pre be prepared to go when I say go, you know. And... It's kind of crazy because, as we are very well aware, the enemy is a strategist. So, um, I'm not so convinced that, to my young friend's point, uh, in his drunken stupor of a rant, um, I don't think things are so black and white as they appear to be on the surface. No pun intended with the whole black and white thing. But um, I really do think that there's more to all of us that meets the eye. And also to his point, I think that it's nearly impossible to really, really discern or tell um, what truth really is in the situation. The question that he had asked that I thought was unfortunately quite sad and true is who do I point the finger at? Who do I blame? Who is responsible? And why don't I have the brain power to figure this out, you know? And it was, again, like I said, kind of sad that that's where, where he felt that he was. But I feel like those people who are trying to get to more than a surface level understanding of what's happening are all probably trying to ask the same question. I have a friend named Gabby. Um, some of you probably know her. And she put it very perfectly. She's like, no matter what's going on, at the end of the day, we know that it's satanic, you know? And um, the thing about that is, again, like I said, the devil is a copycat and he um, doesn't have any original thoughts. He is a strategist and he's far smarter than we intend to believe that he is. And so I think that um, to, to think that he didn't play the long game on this way, on this one, generations and centuries and stuff like that, is pretty silly. Like, like this is a long game play. Um, and we're just seeing some of the side effects of that. Um, but I kind of also have to um, reflect back on the, the thing um, that my mom said that reminds me so much of Exodus. Um, the fact that the children of Israel during the season of Passover, they were told to put um, blood on their doorposts and um, the blood of the lamb on their doorposts to just indicate that this was a, um, this was a place, a safe place that the angel of death should pass over. And um, as you can see, all throughout this neighborhood, um, and this is just an uptown. 
you know, I would, I would almost say it's been untouched compared to a lot of the other areas that have suffered so much devastation. But all over these walls are markings that like children live upstairs or minority owned businesses. Um, we support George Floyd and family and Black Lives Matter. And essentially what they're doing is they're putting their mark on their doorpost. They are like in the book of Exodus, saying angel of death and destruction pass by me and it's just so ironic that the devil is such a copycat um, in terms of how he is playing out these things that we literally see him using some sort of his own version of an exodus um, passover moment in today's day and age and so